Disclaimer. This episode contains graphic descriptions of violence that may be disturbing to some listeners. Please be advised. Hello. Hi. Oh, hey, friends. I'm Taylor. I am Mandy. I'm Amanda. This is Pop, Crime, and Wine. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. I sounded very cheerful. Yeah. That's not normally my style. I'm going to start talking more like Taylor. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's do our I don't sexy like voices. Let's do our sexy voices. All right, guys. Here here to tea meditate tea. and make you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, we're still just here kidding. with our it's annoying voices. It's still just us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. Wisconsin over here. Oh, yeah, here. I'll be you guys, actually. Where do I go to get something around here? Okay. <laughs> or, wait, that's Amanda. Me. Oh, that's let good. me, What's let me mine? think. What's let mine? me see. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be so much worse than that. I know. <laughs> Mine's so weird because you have to be like southern and northern at the, at the exact same time. same time. At the same time. Yeah. Nobody can in person impersonate. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna right? listen yeah. to a couple of our podcasts and then come back Practice. next next episode and have a really good one. Oh, okay. Of you. Perfect. Who's you could sponsor? also just you could oh sorry, oh, sorry. I was sorry. just gonna say yeah. that you could also listen to Wreck It Ralph and just listen to everything that Vanellope von Sweets says and that is me as a yeah cartoon character. That's what you're gonna be for Halloween, right? Yes. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. This is, oh, you, this oh, is the worst. No. Is the cork breaking? Yeah, the cork is breaking. No. Oh, the suspense okay. is all right, killing all right, me. All right, all right, all right, all right. Just read and then I'm gonna, redo I'm it. Reinsert this. Yeah, that's what she <laughs> said. He said. Oh, I'm gonna reinsert it. Okay, so our sponsor this week, as we're trying to open the cork, cork as yep. we're trying to open the bottle. You can't do the words today. I can't. Nope. Right. Here, can I try? <laughs> This is very There's so much cork in here, so it's gonna be you're gonna wonderful. have to pick it out like little gnats. Um, so yeah, Mandy saves the day. <laughs> you're welcome. That'll so be $5. our sponsor this week is Brittany Anderson. Shout out to Brittany. Brittany. Thanks, Brittany. Hey, you're Brittany. The best. Hey, Brittany. Uh-huh. Um, she's also a singer songwriter, so you guys should all totally go listen to her music because she's fantastic. She's the what best. kind of music does she play? Sing, write, whatever. It's like a mix between like country pop, I think. I'm just gonna drink this cork. I don't know what anybody like. It's just powdered. I don't have any cork in mine. Well, I probably got it all because I was the first (laughs) one to pour it. I have to finish the pre wine before I can pour it in mine. (laughs) She so. Oh, that's good. I'm gonna preface really quickly. The wine this week is called Devil's Red. She gave me my topic for our true crime discussion and so she wanted me to get vampire wine Mm -hmm. but I searched all over the area and couldn't find it anywhere and most people said that I would have to wait until Halloween which most Halloween things are coming out now why cannot why can't the wine come out why cannot the wine come out (laughs) now (laughs) wine cannot I cannot speak today (laughs) Mandy and I traded places this is a nice close second though that's fair (laughs) Honestly. Casillo del Diablo. Yes. So the story that I'm going to talk about for our true crime subject is uh, real fucked up. So head up, everyone. Disclaimer. If you are sensitive to anything, (laughs) (laughs) anything at all, (laughs) I I can't wait. We don't know what the story is yet. My 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 favorite crimes are... The craziest ones. The yeah. ones that are like real messed up. Actually, there's only been one or two stories that I've listened to that I just couldn't get through and I had to like pause it you and told never me go one, back. And it and really did make my stomach it's pretty messed up. Oh, there yeah. was one that I almost couldn't listen to, but we were in a car. I was in a car with like three other true crime fans. Wait, was it the baby one? No. Oh, okay. That's the one that you told That's me. That's the one that yeah. I, I could not get through. Ew, let's not talk about it. Yeah, let's not. This story doesn't involve children so i it will it does or does not it does 
It involves children. Okay. It involves cannibalism. Shit, man. And, like, once yeah. you think that you could hate someone so much, then I'm going to keep going and you're going to be gonna like, more. yeah, <laughs> you, you don't know how much you can hate this person. So I am just prefacing that if you don't do well with those types of things, maybe stop listening after, after the, first, the half. first half of this podcast. And if you just skip through <clears throat> this entire thing and you're, you know, just going straight to the crime... You're just going to have to... Surprise. Yeah, yeah. Be surprised, I guess. And disturbed. And disturbed. So. All right. Let's All get right. started. I just yeah. had to put that disclaimer out there, and now I'm going to enjoy good. this devil's red wine. Devil's red. How is it, girls? Oh, I haven't tried it's it really yet. It's really good. Let me see. I enjoy it. Ooh. I can... It's really nice. A little bit more. All right. So, Mandy and I had pop culture... Tonight? Okay, I have like a Holy shnikey, what yeah. are you doing over there? Oh, hey, girl. I didn't think that there was that much left. I didn't take a I didn't, lot either. Well, I mean, <laughs> take that much. You're I, just going to get shwasted. I'm hey. not. Hey, over I there. live here, so. <clears throat> That's a good point. Also, if you guys missed last week's episode, go back and listen to it before you listen to this one, because we changed things up a little bit. We oh, yeah. are no longer doing a random topic. We are getting... to together and deciding on a pop culture and then both researching it but not actually discussing oh, it before or the podcast a random pop culture right it's just a, it's like a <laughs> it's pretty much the same yeah. thing right right the combo anything that involves anything culture, other than crime yeah, yeah. <laughs> like life yeah life is pop culture right yeah. yeah sure let's do it so we wanted to delve into uh inmates who end up getting married after they are um, convicted of crimes. Mm -hmm. um, I know... While they're in... While they're still while in they're prison? While they're still in prison. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People who so a lot choose of, that life. A lot of very famous serial killers often get a mm -hmm. bunch of fan mail, like women who are just throwing themselves at them. Because mm -hmm. there's something... I it's guess weird. there's something mysterious and Like alluring. Charles Manson. Yeah, like Charles I Manson. I about that. If not... I'm gonna put that out there. That yeah, no, yeah. I didn't. Well, I didn't I'll, cover we'll touch him. on him. Oh, okay. Yeah, his story is a little different. He actually, we can we can just tell it real quick. He ended up um, meeting this woman. I I want to say it was they were pen pals or something, and then she wanted to marry him, so they got engaged. And right before they were going to get married, something happened where she was interviewed and she wanted to put his his body once he died into a museum or something and so he was really he freaked was, out yeah. and he called it off that's what you have to do to freak out <laughs> charles as, manson like, a crazy person yeah <laughs> well i want to put you in a museum oh no After definitely you're dead, though. done like we cannot <laughs> like, we cannot get married how would you ever like, nah, like, nah that's bro. there <laughs> but that's the only way she's gonna make money off of you so it's so yeah. crazy you know um i actually i only touched on one wife of a serial killer who was married to him before he got convicted it's actually john wayne gacy's second wife oh so pre pre-prison it was more of like the fact that she was so oblivious yeah. um i mean he was hiding little boys and young men in under the crawl space of their house and she was you know they could smell it and he basically just told them well it's just it's just rats. It's just rats that are dying. He under also there. got arrested while they were married for sodomizing sodomizing a, boy. a, yeah. a young boy, and she yeah. was like, "Oh well, I guess he's reformed and yeah. he's better now." Yeah, like anyone who kind of feels that way, I don't know, flies past the red flags. And he was, I guess, he was really good at being a good guy in the public, so he got away with with a lot. But actually, she ended up divorcing him. Not even it was before he got convicted. Yeah. It's before he got arrested for all the all the murders that he did, but she left him because he w he came out to her in like 1975 as bisexual. As bisexual. Yeah. yeah, and then he started just being really awful to her and mean and moody and like and really just terrible at home. Even though he was still like acting like a good guy out in the world, and so she left him because he was just being well mean. Thank goodness she dodged a bullet there. Oh, I wonder yeah. if what he if did he it on purpose her? though? You know, like I wonder if he cared about her and that I don't was think he did he was, after like, a while. Pushing her away. At least yeah. he didn't murder murder her though. 
Yeah, but that wasn't his shtick, you know? Like he ke- and then he kept bringing teenage boys home while they were still married, mm. like, just to do sexual things. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to give him no, an I out know, or anything. No, I know, but, like... He but... probably also, like, didn't actually care about her because he was yeah. a crazy person, and yeah. I don't think that they can Yeah. Well, so- actually, sociopaths just yeah, pretend, sociopaths, I guess. Sociopaths, like, can't actually care about people. Yeah. But that should be another topic we we talk about. Sociopaths. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I know a few in real life. Really? Like, for real? For real? Oh, totally. Yeah. They say one, Not that in, they're one gonna... in three people are sociopaths, so dun, which dun, one? Dun. No, I'm just but kidding. That's which one in this room? I literally <laughs> just made up off the top of my head to scare you guys. Oh, God. But, uh, <laughs> it's got to be more than you think. Not all sociopaths are murderers, yeah. though. Yeah. I did read an article about how if you drink coffee black, you are a sociopath. Really? Mm-hmm. I know a few of yeah. those, then. I'm, like I'm, all of my ex-boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure, yeah. So. That makes so much sense now. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I drank my coffee black, but only because I was on a diet at the time, not because I enjoyed it. So you hated it? I mean, it was tolerable. No. I would rather have black coffee than no coffee at all. I'll just put that out there. So maybe I'm like Hmm. part sociopath. Yeah. That's another discussion. Yeah. Can you be a certain percentage sociopath or are you like you're in it or you're not? You well, are. I think there's or you like aren't. a there's like a actual thing in your brain you're missing, like some sort of compassion, like some chemical that's not firing correctly. Like your that, entire hippocampus. I love that word. Me too. That's why I just said hippocampus. It. <laughs> it's really great. Okay, so what else? Um, what else did you so, find? So, well, while I was researching um, people who end up getting married to men or women in incarceration. I came across this word a couple times, and I know I'm going to butcher it, but it's called hybristophilia. Maybe Mm. I didn't. Maybe that's exactly how you say it. Maybe. Um, We don't know. Maybe not. But the definition is it's a psychological condition where someone's aroused by the idea of someone else committing a terrible act. And when I was researching it, it came up all the time. So it's kind of... I don't know. So if you wrong. think about it, these women, They're most of most of the ones that yeah I, I came across were women who mm. married men who were serial killers or serial rapists, and a lot of them pretended to think that that they were innocent. Yeah. Um, well, they were saying men men are way less likely to find romantic relationships with women in prison. Yeah. It's probably also because there are way less women in prison as like serial killers that is or true. murderers. You know, they were shown per- percentages or whatever. Yeah, I don't so know if you men have are 11 times as likely to be incarcerated than women. Mm, yeah. 11 times. So I feel like just st- statistically, statistically speaking. Yeah. Uh, jinx. Yeah, Very yeah, cute. Pick. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love. But the fact that someone can be f- like attracted to someone based on the terrible things that they've Mm -hmm. done is kind of messed up. And they said um, psychologists and researchers say that individuals with a history of abuse or low self-esteem, they're maybe more likely to fall in love with a person who has committed a violent crime, which is crazy. And yeah, low self-esteem, especially because most of these women were kind of, I don't want to say this out loud, but also like, you know, they, they might not feel like they can get the type of, like, man that they're getting in jail. Right, outside of it. Because, you know, when you're in jail and you don't see women all the time, mm-hmm. this woman is the most beautiful woman you've ever seen yeah. because you haven't seen a woman in six months or however long it's right. been. Did you guys come up with this idea after watching Orange is the New Black? No, because I started watching the new season and I couldn't get into it. Oh, I haven't. I'm not talking about the new oh. season, but just because the one girl she found like that guy. Yeah, Lorna. Um, Lorna, La- yeah. She's Wait, crazy. Which one? She is crazy. Lorna, the, the one that you do her. Oh, Christopher. Yeah, Christopher. that one. Oh my goodness, Christopher. But then she like found that guy online or something, or not online, oh, yeah, but like yeah, he yeah, was a pen right. pal for her. Yeah. Yeah, and which most is, of these nor- started that yeah. way. And he was, like, super weird when he came to visit her and, like, yeah. wouldn't tell people that he was, like, talking to a girl Vinny. in prison. Oh, yeah, Vinny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually, I was watching this TV show on, I think it's on Investigation Discovery, but it's called Prison Wives. And there was this one where it, it was this guy named Josh, I think, Joshua Bailey, or something like that. But his wife actually met him because 
her brother married his sister. Okay, so let me all say that again. So, yeah, yeah, her brother married his sister, and his sister went to go visit him, and she didn't want to go alone. So she was like, hey, come with me. And so she went with her, and she was like, oh, this guy's, like, really nice. And he's, like, really attractive. And they just met randomly through actually seeing each other face-to-face. That was the only encounter that I read up on that um, didn't start as pen pals. It kind of started as, like, a physical thing first. Well, and most of these people are, like huge manipulators like well, they yeah, are they say that most of like they can say and do pretty much anything to get these mostly women mm. to follow whatever they want and get them to fall in love with them and then like stash their commissary and the send them care packages and yeah so it's amazing to me how many people can be manipulated through writing like mm-hmm. i feel like me personally i would be able like, not saying that I would be able to be manipulated, but I feel like I can understand being manipulated more if you're in person with someone and not just through writing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think it's that it's time between. Yeah. Those two. It's like, okay, well, I can get it if there's someone that is like very debonair and like can, is just like very persuasive and like really good at pretending to be this mm-hmm. perfect person. But, Writing, I feel like, can come off either, like, really well or terribly. Yeah. Right. I mean, we deal with that in text messages yeah. every day. But that's also, true. yeah, I mean, if they could write a good poem, they could get was, any, any lady. That's they true. said, too, yeah. um, that a lot of the women, like, after they started interviewing, like, these people, the researchers were interviewing women that had romantic relationships or even married men after they were in prison, said that... Um, they like the control Mm -hmm. of the situation. The fact that like they literally know where they are 24 seven. That's they can't talk to uh, other than like letters, whatever. They don't like, they don't have contact with other women like they do with this person. Like it's, it takes a lot of effort to have contact period. But then, you know, so they're like the fact that I can, I can control when I go see them, they get, I know that they're excited to go see me and, Whatever. So that's on my pros and cons list. I made a pros and cons she made list. made a pros and cons list. About, you know, marrying someone who's incarcerated. I can't wait. And with the pros, that was one of them. It was kind of like, you know, they're not cheating on you unless it's with, you know, some dudes in the shower room. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why I said shower room. That's it made, weird. Yeah. But it it's fun. Sense. It's usually but a then room full of showers. Also, yeah. you, during the day, you can just wear your PJs all day. You're not trying to impress anybody. <laughs> Because he's in jail. Like, you can get all dressed up and go in. Just once a week. And see him once a week. (laughs) And you don't have to be all, you know, beautiful all the time. Of course, I'm not anyway. (laughs) Yes, you are. What I'm saying, I don't don't put, like, makeup on and get all dolled up every day. Yeah. Not even near. Of course, my husband. But your husband is away for a year, so (laughs) (laughs) that's... Uh, You only pay for food for one... Which is also a con because you only you make food for one. Yeah. It's difficult to do. You that. don't get cuddles though. You no don't get cuddles. Contact. That's that's one of those things we were talking about earlier. So you get the entire bed to yourself. You can stretch out and make a big star, but that's also a con. You get the entire bed to yourself. There's no I mean, one there when you Mark turn and I over. Just got a king king size bed, and I can starfish out all night long, <laughs> and I still don't have to touch him. Yeah, unless I want to. Yeah, Which I it's like nice to, to have the choice. Yeah, I like yeah. to touch him before Every, I go to sleep, and then I like to starfish yes. out and sleep I well. I just love Middle the visualization of the, of the term starfish as a verb. <laughs> I like to starfish out. Yeah, I use good. it all I day, like every that day. A lot. And then you could wake up at 4 a.m. and just like touch his butt and be like, oh, he's there. He's cool. there. Yeah, there like, you are. Knowing that he's there is enough. Makes me feel safe yep. enough to sleep well, but also like I don't need to touch him all night long so that yeah, I, I don't get those people well. that cuddle like the entire all the time i don't understand i'm number one i am an oven <laughs> i emit so much heat and <laughs> my husband bugs me about this he yeah he gets too hot i'm always too hot so we could never do that i don't understand how people can do that unless it's they're like living outside in siberia does it get cold in siberia 
It sounds like a hot place. It does. Siberia? <laughs> it sounds like a desert, but it's fine. I'm sure it's cold because well, you, you Russia? said it. Oh, that makes oh, sense. Okay. Because the tigers are white, so they blend oh, in with the Siberian snow. Siberian tigers. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, okay. <laughs> so another pro, you get to watch all your chick flicks and you don't have to watch hockey. <laughs> oh, Whoa. shots fired. Wow. Shots fired personally. <laughs> <laughs> to her husband Sam, who plays mm. hockey. I also enjoy watching hockey, and I like that's watching like hockey. Part of For my the chick flicks. Yeah, <laughs> we, it's yeah. a it's a give and take. Ooh, we should invest in chick flicks, like an offspring of Netflix. Chick flicks. Oh, except for you're telling everyone. You're telling about everybody, it right yeah. Now. And oh. so someone else is going to come up with that now. And I guess we're going to have to copyright it before this, this comes out. Comes out. <laughs> we have a week. <laughs> um. Okay. So one of the one of the people that I researched and I think Taylor did as well um, was Oscar Ro- Bolin. Mm-hmm. Sorry, and he was one that got married after he was already in prison and after he was already convicted of one murder account well three right because he was he He didn't meet her until after he was convicted for one and they let him out no then he had then they got married and then he was convicted of the other two for murder oh oh but he he did them before yes i was like they let him he was in prison yeah my okay so like she already knew that he was in murder for prison he was in murder he was prison (laughs) y'all i'm done i'm gonna go leave now um (laughs) I'll see you guys later. So he was convicted of one, but he had already done three. Yes. Okay. I don't want to talk anymore. Keep going. I'm just kidding. You're good. Um, and she was loaded, right? Rosalie. Rosalie hmm. Martinez. I don't know. Well, she was, I mean, she was, she was the, the wife, wife of, of an a, attorney. Yeah. She had a, like all of the things. Four daughters. A huge mansion and all the jewels. And she fucking left all of that to go marry this felon in prison. After she was... Over like, the phone. Assigned to his yeah. his case. She was like his public defender. So she actually went and got blood tests done before they got married, which I don't understand why, but maybe just to make sure that they're not related or something. Oh, that she wasn't related to Oscar? Yeah. I know <laughs> in some states you have to do that. Yeah. Oh, like that's in Kentucky, you have-, you have to have a blood test before you get married to someone. I didn't know that. Because uh, I think they should definitely people do, it do in, that like, quite Alabama. a bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny because Kentucky. Um, so anyway, because Kentucky. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> we're gonna offend everybody. Sorry, you can take podcast. that out if you want. <laughs> but when they first met, he like went up to her and he was like, "Who are you?" And she goes, "I'm your angel." Like, who says that? Ew. She sounds like a crazy person. She, she married is. a person yeah. in prison. <laughs> Does or that murder. make you crazy? Is that, that's really the question we're asking. Does that make you a crazy person? Hmm. What's the definition of crazy? I feel like we've said that a lot tonight. Yeah, I guess crazy is pretty general. Broad. I was going to say then I'm crazy, but for other reasons, you know? Yeah. It's a broad term. A little bit crazy. I mean, I don't think that any of us would marry someone in prison. But that's just probably because we're already married. The thing is, is that she believed he was innocent. Like, through and through. She believed yeah. that he was completely See, innocent. See, I feel like that's different. I feel like if you marry someone thinking that they're innocent... Like, if she truly believed that he was innocent, then it would... I give her a little bit more... I, I don't know the term. Three murdered I, women. I don't think that she actually thought he was innocent. I think she was leaving... She left her husband and her children behind she couldn't she couldn't keep her children so she had to somehow make it sound like it was for a good reason right. by um, saying oh he's innocent she's just he didn't do it. it she's justifying the fact that she's just really but attracted to an inmate okay because i feel like if you actually believe that he's innocent then that makes you a little bit better than the person that's marrying them knowing that they're not innocent. Yeah. But at least that person is is I don't know. I just feel like she she has to know yeah. that he obviously did it. But who knows? I'm not in her brain. I don't know. I don't know that life. Thank Jesus. I mean, there's plenty of people that are convicted of crimes all the time that didn't actually commit them. Not yeah, saying that that's true. You know, like maybe her being an attorney made her She believes the good in people. Yeah. So 
like you I'm said, just to they, play got, advocate. they got married in front of like a camera crew. So it's all on video. And he wasn't even there. He was like phoned in on a phone and they had like a picture phoned of him. In on a phone. She yep. pho- he phoned in on a phone. Girl, phone me in on your phone. But he was on the intercom and they had like a picture of him standing in where he would have been standing. Oh, how God. do you get married over the, f- like, how is that legal? I guess there had to have been a judge Well, they present. still have to sign the paperwork and stuff. I'm yeah. sure, you know. To get married, all you need is the paperwork and then somebody says, do you, do you, yes, kiss Brad, in theory. And you don't even need to kiss the bride. You don't, to be, but. You know, like. That's it. You just need the paperwork. Pretty much. And you both have to say, like, yeah, I'm hmm. doing it. But um, they lasted pretty long. Like, 20 years later, they were yeah. still married when he was executed. In 2016. He did. What? So you murdered three women? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was that carnival worker that... Uh, did he rape them, too? Yeah. Well, yeah. he bludgeoned them and stabbed them. Oh, God. But they found sexual assault present on... I just read about the one, but I'm, yeah, I don't know about the others. So... Yeah. There's all kinds of shit. But they it it was in Florida, right? It is kind of funny that a lot of these are in Florida. <laughs> yeah, mine says killed three women in Florida. Yeah, Tampa. Yeah. Uh, they called him Bolin the Butcher. Ew. It's a terrible name. But it reminds me of Dexter, and I, I do like him. I just wanna, Dexter's a fictional character. I just want to say that not everything that comes out of Florida is a bad thing. Amanda came out of Florida. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> a lot of bad things have come out of Florida. Yeah. There's that radio station that does Freaky Florida every Friday. And then that podcast, Felonious Florida. What? Oh, God. I haven't heard of that. Oh, it's like all of these killers and they, yeah, it's called Felonious Florida. I should Look it up. There's a lot of famous people that came out of Florida. A lot of movies about famous people that have come out of Florida. Yeah. So the the reason I thought of this idea was kind of because I was listening to a podcast about David Ramirez. And I actually didn't even know about the fact that he got married in prison until the very end of the podcast where they were like, oh, yeah, he ended up getting married and then blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh. They just skimmed over it like yeah. it was nothing. And I'm like, I need to research that. Um, did I say David Ramirez? Yes. yes. Shit. Sorry, David. Richard Ramirez. <laughs> I was like, I was David, like Ramirez? David Ramirez. David Ramirez. David um, Ramirez is a musician. One yeah, of your favorites. He's one of my favorites. He must have just been really on my confused. mind. I was really confused. I was like, like who damn. is David Ramirez? There's so much. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> How do you Richard music? Ramirez. Dick. <laughs> Who is the Night Stalker? Dick Ramirez. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but he's he's famous for, like, going into a bunch of people's houses and just randomly raping them and killing them. Like, old ladies. Mm-hmm. Like, ladies who are, like, 65 years old, 70 years old, and he just goes in, he rapes them, and he kills them. Some people he didn't end up killing. But at the end of his days, he ended up getting a lot of fan mail and, like, mm-hmm. people who... We're in love with him because he had this weird, like, charm. If you look up Richard Ramirez and, like, the gifts where he's, like, he's just got these cheekbones and, like, this long, flowy locks yeah. of hair. You're like, oh, okay. He had something. There was something going on there. Mm. But he ended up marrying his pen pal. He went to death row, right? Yes, but he actually died of natural causes. Damn it. Waiting to be put to death. Um, we should talk about how many times that happens. Yeah. Does that happen often? Mm-hmm. Oh, because it takes so long? Yeah. Yeah, because people are on death row for years and years think, and years. I think it's also kind of good because I know there have been a few people who have been wrongly convicted and put to death. And then they find out, you know, like a year before they're actually supposed to be executed that they didn't actually do it. And yeah. you're like, thank goodness we didn't. You know, fuck this guy's life up. I feel like that has gone down dramatically in recent years because of technology. Yeah. You think? Well, I think they also need, I think they need more evidence for a conviction now because it's possible to have that evidence. Yeah. Look at how many people that have totally killed people and got off. Yeah. OJ. 
Right. Mm. Um, if that would have happened now. But he got off because story. he was like really likable and famous, right? No, he got off for a lot of different reasons the that glove. we should talk about on a different Oh, yeah. yeah. That'll be a good pop culture topic. Yeah. Uh, did you want to touch on Ted Bundy now? Did yeah, you want to touch on him? Just for, <laughs> See Ew. what I did there? I'm sorry. Gross. See but what I did he, there? <laughs> people thought he was really good looking. I know. I, people I, did. I'm not a fan. I, I think he looks creepy. I, I think, think that he looks creepy because of the picture. Like, I don't think that anyone like takes one. a good picture in prison. But Nobody can see what my face looked like. No. no. <laughs> but we could. So. It's a good impression it's all of that they, It was the one with the bulging eyes. Yeah. So, But Ted Bundy was very attractive he was very good at manipulating people. He was also very good at making people like him. And people that were right next to him, like, never knew that he was this horrible person. Mm-hmm. But they're also making a movie about him, and they're Zac using Zac Efron. Efron. That makes so sense. So you can't disagree that he was attractive if they're using Zac Efron. Okay, well, well, let's Zac not Efron talk about Hollywood. So like him. No. But, okay, Zac Efron is not everybody's cup of tea. AK, I'm not down with it. I mean, I don't think he's unattractive, but I wouldn't go out of my way to be like, oh my God, Zach Efron. I still look at him as a child. Amanda's face right now I have like, I know what confusion. my face looks like. No, it's like disgust. I'm like, how can you not how think that he's you? so beautiful? <laughs> you shut your mouth. Oh, he's Zac also like, Efron. like five foot five or something no, crazy, it's isn't not. he? I feel like he's real short. I have no I don't idea. Know I don't know, but I'm only five four and a half, but maybe you're... five five on a good day. So I'm okay with the fact that he's still taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll touch on Ted Bundy. All I'm saying is that Zac Efron and Ted Bundy are both really attractive, and I'm <laughs> disappointed that Ted Bundy is dead. I think I'm more interesting. I think <laughs> that you say that. I think if I had to choose a serial killer that was the most attractive, I think I would go with Richard Ramirez. Is that weird? I don't know what he looks like. I'm going to give you a visual. Give me one second. I don't want to rate the <laughs> the good looking. Who's your favorite serial killer? Of the serial killers. Who's your serial killer crush? Right in the him. That's what we're talking about right yeah. now, though, you know? We, yeah. like, would we marry them in prison? I feel like I would probably have a higher chance of marrying Ted Bundy than I would. Okay, most well, let of me tell you ones. how he married his wife. Um, Please tell me. So there is a so he and he met um, his then wife Carol Ann Boone. They met during his trial in 1977 when he started writing her letters. They worked together in Washington first okay. for the state of Washington. And then well, she I moved just said her they started life. talking to each other in 1977. You said they met in Florida. Well, they Ted's trials in Florida. She she like moved her whole life. Right. But they, but they didn't do but that. But they met. They in, talked before she moved. Yeah, but they met before he was taken in, before he even started killing people. Okay. Yeah. The next thing I was going to say was that she packed up her life and moved. Um she ended up being a character witness for him during his trials because of her support for him. Um, and then she started to demand that Ted marry her because she felt that it was owed to her. Um, they said it was hard to say if Ted ever really loved her or if he just saw her as a means to an end. Um, I mean, he was on death row after I feel like all. He was a sociopath too, so he probably he was. was just using her. Absolutely. Um, they, uh, they got a marriage license or she got a marriage license, um, but they were struggling to find a minister, um, or anybody that would perform the ceremony for them. So they found a loophole in Florida law that said, basically, um, it was during one of his trials and she was standing as a character witness for him on the stand. And while she was getting questioned, he basically asked, he just asked her to marry him and said they, she just declared that they were married. Did you and that watch was the video like, on it? That's like a law in Florida that that's a binding like marriage. Legally. If a judge is present. Yes. Did you watch the video no. where he did it? It's like the most nonchalant. Like he was like, he was talking about something else. And then all of a sudden he's just like, well, d- do you want to marry me? And she's like, yes. And he goes, do you, do I want to, do you think I want to marry you? And she's like, yes. And he's like, so we're married. And she's like, Yes. 
It was the weirdest thing ever. She just said yes three That's times. And every, the whole like courtroom was just quiet like, what the fuck is so happening? So does that mean that she can't testify against him anymore? Is that why he did no, it? No, he was, he, she wasn't testifying against him. She was, she was a, a character, character witness, witness for him uh, saying that he was a good person and that he was innocent. Yeah. Weird. So, mm. um, fast forward a little bit. Carol Ann ended up becoming pregnant with his child while he was on death row. How? You There's, can have like... Con- no. There was no conjugal visits allowed. So there was a couple different theories about how she got preggers. One actually reminded me of Orange is the New Black. They're not going to say it because there's spoilers in it. But one of the inmates, whatever, in that show tried to get pregnant. Um... By passing a in condom, the recent one, yeah, oh, okay. Uh, I, was I was like, like I don't remember that. <laughs> by having Second a guy time. fill up a condom with his genetic material, and then she would like they would like sneak it to each other through a kiss or something. Isn't that gross. And then yeah, she would take it and try to get herself Oof. pregnant with it. I thought that, like biologically speaking, don't the sperm die after they're after out? a while? It's not I don't right know away. How long? Yeah, that actually takes. But then the other theory Gross. was that they had a quickie by a vending machine in the visiting room, which is more plausible, but still also they're being watched like a hawk. So like, who actually knows? But she ended up having a little baby girl. It's actually genetically tied to him. Like, this is his actual child. Well, she took blood tests. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. She took blood tests before they got the marriage certificate. Um. So yeah, it's his kid. So they did it somehow. And what's funny is most of these cases, like, they didn't get to have sex at all. Like, no. most of these couples never had sex. There are actually only five states who have conjugal visits mm-hmm. even allowed. And that's California, Washington, Mississippi, New York, and Connecticut. Which, like, none of the states I've ever lived in. So mm-hmm. if I ever went to jail, that would be really sad. That'd be really I'd sad. be like, take me to New York. <laughs> <laughs> For a very specific reason. Yeah, just... <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I just need a weekend. It's fine. <laughs> it was really sad though, because um, once the once their little girl got old enough to understand that her dad, like she couldn't hug him after a while, because when he got put on, it was like death watch or something, um, because he, he was could, on like, death kill row. Himself? No, it was um, because he was. It was like the last year before he got killed. Before he yeah. got murdered. Whatever. Yeah. Before he got executed. Mm. Um, and so she started, like, her, it, the daughter started to get upset in the waiting room because it would just be behind touch. glass. Yeah. And so she started, like, having temper tantrums and stuff. And so Carol stopped bringing her in. And then she just fell off the face. Yeah. Of the they, she much. changed their last names and they disappeared. Nobody really knows what I happened to them. I wonder where they are now. I tried to Google it a little bit, but there's literally I nothing came on up them. With nothing. Yeah. And then he died by execution. How old would she be? Um, Ooh. Uh, this was what? Back in the 70s, yeah, right? Yeah, this was... 1980, they had... 1980 was when they got married. So she was probably like 20-something, 30-something. Yeah. So, so now, mm, math. Yeah. You know? Math is hard. <laughs> How many times have we said that on this yeah. podcast? <laughs> Let's just not do math ever. <laughs> I just don't want to so look anyway, dumb. don't marry people in prison. <laughs> That's Did you know one in every 138 people in the U.S. are incarcerated at one point? At this, oh, sorry, this statistic was taken in 2004, so it was well over 10 years ago. But it was like one in every 138 people in the U.S. has spent time in prison. That's surprising, actually. That just kind of crazy. Seems like a it? lot, like a lot, right? But. How many people, I guess I didn't look it up, but how many people do you think are in prison right now? Mm. Like, what percent of our population? I think it said two million. Two million? At any given time. Holy moly. See, that makes sense, though. Mm-hmm. One in every, you know. Ugh. But you don't just go to prison for murdering people. Like, you can go to prison for, for a anything. Lot of things. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, so, did you have anything else? Uh, I had one other guy specifically Mm -hmm. but i'll just like kind of skim through it because his story is super creepy um have you heard of philip carl jablonski no i don't like him if you look up his picture he is the scariest looking man i've ever seen in my entire life other than john wayne gacy and and charles manson well he's up there for sure yeah Yeah, he's he's in in with them like they all hang out together at lunch he's got those eyebrows right and like like, throw really sharpened pencils at people's backs 
I don't know. I don't know. But he was a serial rapist and a serial killer. And earlier on, he was just a rapist and he would just like sexually assault all of his girlfriends who ended up like staying with him for years. It's kind of the craziest thing. He was pretty violent towards his wife and pretty much every girlfriend that he's ever had. And it all changed when he started living with this girl named Linda Kimball. And they had a daughter together. And one night he went to her mom's house. He went to her mom's house and he was going to rape her mom. Linda's mom. Linda's mom. And he gets there and he like startles her awake because he's going in for the kill. Not the kill, but you know, whatever. And she looks at him and he he stops because he's like, oh, she looks too much like Linda for this to be okay. And so then he leaves and she obviously tells Linda and Linda leaves him and takes the daughter and he ends up killing her. So she leaves him and then she came back to get stuff and he ended up killing her. And then he killed like all these other people. And this girl ended up finding him through an ad he put out for a pen pal. And then they started talking and then she started dating him. And then he got out of prison on good behavior and, and then ended up her. murdering he her murdered, and her yeah, mother. Yeah, yes. too, yeah. It's like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Like he, if you are marrying a serial killer, expect to get murdered. Yeah. You are going to be line. murdered. And if you aren't, you're like not. It's because he didn't get out. Like what? if you're not murdered yeah, by him, it's because exactly. he doesn't get out of prison. Yeah. If you're if you're not murdered and you're and you're married to a serial killer, it's because he's in jail and he can't kill you. Hashtag, don't marry serial killers. <laughs> That's on our next T-shirt. <laughs> I like it. I like, I like it, it too. I like that a lot. Just but the word. That's pretty much that guy. Wow. Yeah. I hate him and I don't even know anything yeah. about him yet. He's so I mean, gross looking too. Just told us. Yeah, he's pretty gross. All right, now we get to the real messed up story. Let's get to the. <laughs> To the disturbing stuff. True crime. And this was requested by Brittany, right? Yes. Brittany said, hey, I would love to sponsor an episode, but... But only if you do. Only <laughs> if you say this. So... And who is it? Well, he has multiple names. The reason why she wanted me to get Vampire Wine is because he is known as... The Gray Man, The Werewolf of Wisteria, The Brooklyn Vampire, The Moon Maniac, and The Boogeyman. Ooh. His real name was Albert Fish. Which isn't quite as... Not quite as scary, but it is creepy. He was born as Hamilton Fish, Hmm. if that helps. That's less creepy than Albert Fish, I think. Sounds more like a stand-up dude. Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton. Hamilton Fish. Hamilton Fish. Uh, <laughs> he likes giving candy to all the school children yes. on the way home. He reads books <laughs> and his office smells of rich That's mahogany. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's the most fucked up person I've ever all read right. about. So let's get real yep. into this. Let's do this. Like I said before, this is a trigger warning for anyone that has any issues with anything. pretty much anything. <laughs> Albert Fish is an American serial killer, and he's not very well known, and I think it's because of how terrible his crimes were. It's not one of those things that people really talk about. I think that we get very... Is that like the line in the sand where it's like just too much? Yeah, it's like... it's it's. It's one of those things where you're like, oh, well, we can talk about how someone murders women or men and does all these terrible things to them. Mm-hmm. But as soon as it goes to children, it's like, oh, yeah, let's much. not talk about that. Yeah. And not only was he a child rapist, but he was a cannibal. So it's like he Damn. just keeps adding. At one time, he boasted that he had children in every state. What, what do you mean? State well, like don't know. the fifty like, states, in or 50 state states, like yes. every state of decomposition. No, it wasn't. That was where sort of my mind went. Sorry, he, oh, okay. he wasn't that bad. Okay, that I know of. So he had children in every in state that he killed. They don't know if it was that he killed or if it was just that he raped them oh, okay. in every state. God. So now that everyone knows what we're talking about, I'm gonna. Just jump right in. Fish was born in Washington, D.C. on May 19th, 1870. He 
was born as Hamilton, and a lot of people made fun of him and called him Ham and Eggs. No. And he hated it, so he changed his name to Albert, which was the name of a dead sibling of his. Oh. I feel like if you're going to change your name, really go, go with, for like, it. like, John, if you're like, you know, Albert, I feel like that's... I mean, it was after his own dead brother. That feels worse. Like Probably, yeah. And I'm not going to argue that that was worse. Okay. So, Fish's family had a history of mental illness. His uncle suffered from mania. His brother was confined in a mental hospital. His sister was diagnosed with mental affliction. Wow. Three other relatives were diagnosed with mental illness, and his mother had visual hallucinations. So, he was born with this. Mm. Sounds like it. I think that... I think that a lot of people, yes, he was predisposed. I think that a lot of people have a lot of hardships as children, but don't become serial killers. Mm-hmm, that's true. I think that he ha- was predisposed by having a lot well, of mental illness. This was 1870. Yes. So it's not like they had the best means to help these people. I mean, basically, if you were crazy, you were stuck in a crazy hospital. Yeah. Right. And I mean, his if they even dad, had those. Yeah. his dad was 43 years older than his mother and 75 years old at the time that Albert was born. Gross. Oh, God. I mean, it, yeah. So his dad died when he was young because of a heart attack. And the mom couldn't handle having all four of her children. So she had to, like, bring two of her kids to an orphanage because she couldn't take care of them. So he went into an orphanage where he was frequently abused. He began to enjoy the physical pain that the beatings brought. Of his time at the orphanage, Fish remarked, I was there till I was nearly nine, and that's where I got started wrong. We were unmercifully whipped. I saw boys doing many things that they should not have done. By 1880, his mother had a government job and was able to remove Fish from the orphanage. In 1882, at age 12, he began a relationship with a telegraph boy. The youth introduced Fish to such practices as urolagnia and coprophagnia. Fagia. Fagia? I don't know. I totally messed those up. But urolagnia is drinking urine. Oh. And coprophagia is eating feces. Oh, why? So that's like a thing they do, like for enjoyment? Yes. Okay. And that's what this other telegraph boy taught him. Hmm. Fish began visiting public baths where he could watch other boys undress and spent a great portion of his weekends on these visits. But he was o- he was only young? Yeah, he was only 12 when all of that started. Oh my gosh. He was That's 9 sad. when he was 9 in the orphanage. Okay. Or he was what there does, until he was 9. What Sorry. does that do to your body? Can you like physically eat poop? No, I mean and be okay? No, you can get I infections. I don't and... think so. But I mean, I don't know how how much was ingested you know like he doesn't go into detail i mean he lived a long life so it's Mm -hmm. not but i mean he started out with a really rough life he also like we said before had a a history of mental illness in his family so it wasn't like he had a great family life or upbringing yeah Um, he didn't have a great start to his life Yeah. yeah he was set up for failure for sure By 1890, Fish arrived in New York City, and he said at that point he became a prostitute and began raping young boys. In 1898, his mother arranged a marriage for him with Anna Mary Hoffman, who was nine years his junior. They had six children together. Throughout 1898, he worked as a house painter. He said he continued molesting children, mostly boys younger than age six. He later recounted an incident in which a male lover took him to waxworks to a waxworks museum where Fish was fascinated by a bisection of a penis. After that, he became obsessed with sexual mutilation. Like I said, it's just going to keep getting yeah. worse. No, did he sexually assault his children, his own children? So they could never find they 
they never had anyone admit that they were sexually assaulted. The sons were not surprised whenever they found out all of the things later on in yeah. life, but no one ever came out and said that he actually, like, actually he abused had, them. yes. Yeah. Okay. God, I feel bad for his wife. Like, you know, having that home life like that, I can't imagine what would happen behind closed doors. Yes. If that, you know, if his fetish is boys younger than six. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where I try not to think about like how his brain worked because you can't even begin it, to I can't, understand. Yeah. Yes. And I also like I've said in past episodes, I'm fascinated with the human brain. So I try to understand it, but he's but this, not someone no, that like no. it it absolutely makes no sense at all. The only way that I can think of is that like he got older but his brain maybe never yeah. matured and he's I don't stunted. Yeah, and and that's the way that I think to like try and make it okay, even though it's not. even though it's never yeah. gonna be okay. But that's what the brain does is try and make sense of things. So I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, well, maybe this is like maybe this is his saving grace. But right. I, I mean, I don't think that he has any saving grace, and that's what I think is so terrible about this whole situation. But I mean, I don't. I think it's hard to just. It's hard for me personally to just like assume that someone is a monster i mean yeah. not that i'm assuming mm-hmm. i'm reading all about him yeah he is and a monster he is a for monster sure. mm-hmm. he's 100 percent a monster which is why we have the devil's wine okay yeah. uh <laughs> which so, is delicious by the way oh it's yeah very it's good. so yeah. great yes around 1910 while he was working in wilmington delaware fish met a 19 year old man named thomas kedden he took kedden to where he was staying and the two became the two began a sad I don't know how to say this, sadomasochistic Mm -hmm. relationship. It is unclear whether or not Fish forced Keaton to do these things, but in his confession, he implies that the man was intellectually disabled. After 10 days, Fish took Kedden to an old farmhouse where he began to torture him. The torture took place over two weeks. Fish eventually tied Kedden up and cut off half of his penis. <gasps> oh my god. Wait, half like Don't the... ask which way. They didn't You're go into they didn't go into detail. No. Okay. No. I'm just trying to, you know, piece the I'm sure that it's together. like the f- like the front the front part okay. of it, not like down the middle. Okay. Because I, that's I'm assuming, I don't know. So <laughs> I shall never forget his scream or the look he gave me, Fish later recalled. He originally intended to kill Kedden, cut up his body, and take it home, but he feared the hot weather would draw attention to him. Instead, Fish poured peroxide over the wound, wrapped it in a Vaseline-covered handkerchief, left a $10 bill, kissed Kedden goodbye, and left. I took the first train I could get back home, never heard what became of him, or tried to find out, Fish said. Wow. In January 1917, Fish's wife left him and their children. So that goes back to your question That's about yeah. the home life. But she left but she the left children? Her own children. Yeah, yeah she take left. Those, take those kids with you. She left him for another man. Oh. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't seem like she was. Because the- he wasn't sexually, you know. Making her happy, yeah. probably. Probably. Because he was but, getting it from... I mean, she left all six of her children with this Yeah, sicko. that's awful. She's kind of terrible, too. Yeah. It was about this time that Fish began to indulge in self-harm. He would embed needles into his groin and abdomen. Jesus. After his arrest, x-rays revealed that Fish had at least 29 needles lodged in his pelvic region. He also hit himself repeatedly with a nail-studded paddle and inserted wool doused with lighter fueled lighter fluid into his anus and set it alight. What? I read a, a few articles and I listened to a few podcasts about this as well about how he would put like cotton into his rectum and set it on fire inside For of his body. For the purpose of feeling the pain. Just, yeah. Yes. He Oh, my God. So he had a few interviews where he talked about how not only did he like to inflict pain on other people, but he liked to have pain inflicted on himself. Like a dominatrix kind of? Yes. So he was sadistic in the fact that he wanted to, 
or ma- he was a masochist. Yeah, masochist. Yeah. yeah. So he like wanted to inflict it on other people, but, but he also, also it. wanted it yeah. on to cell. him. On his, him. And I feel like that's too. from everything that I've ever known about like those types of relationships. There's usually one that likes to inflict pain and one that likes to have the pain inflicted on them. Yeah. I feel like it's not normally one of those things that is like both flip flopped. Yeah. Mm. So, while he was never thought to have physically attacked or abused his children, he did encourage them and their friends to paddle his buttocks with the same nail-studded paddle he used to abuse himself. Wow. Oh, he had his kids do it? His own kids and their friends. Yeah. So, even though he might not have, like, actually, like, hurt them or abused his own children, he did have them kind of, like... That is abuse, though, you know? Yeah, I mean, Yeah, yeah, but they had him... Yeah, they had them do that. He soon developed a growing obsession with cannibalism, and he would often prepare himself dinner consisting solely of raw meat, and sometimes he would serve it to his children as well. From raw human meat? Just raw meat in general. So, like, he became so obsessed with cannibalism, and he, like, would research it and, like, try to learn all about it, and so he would start, like, just eating raw meat to, like... Feel how like he was start, a cannibal. Like, how do you get started in that? You know, how do you how like do you... slowly start eating raw meat with things just so your body gets n- used to it? I, I mean, know. his body was already used to eating feces. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So, it's I don't like a war zone in there. Ugh. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. In about 1919, he stabbed an intellectually disabled boy in Georgetown, Washington D.C. Fish chose people who were either mentally handicapped or African American as his victims, explaining that he assumed these people would not be missed when killed. Oh, what a dick. Yeah. You're going to say that a lot. He would later claim to occasionally pay boys to procure him other children. Fish tortured, mutilated, and murdered young children with his implements of hell a meat cleaver, a butcher knife, and a small handsaw. On July 11th, 1924, Fish found eight... So, he's yeah. been doing this for, like, forever now. Yeah, he... Since I mean, he he's like been, like... He's been raping people for, like, a really long time. But he hasn't, like, actually... I was gonna say, he hasn't killed, killed anybody anyone yet. anyone yet. But he he oh, left okay. so that guy... he wasn't, guy, like, eating like, any people yet. No. Okay. So, he's, like, he's slowly... Making his way towards making, yeah, it's like something more sinister. A murderer, basically, like he started off <sighs> like with all these terrible things. It's like kids that um, like kill animals when they're a kid, and then they eventually like grow up to kill people. Yeah, and I did. I'm sorry, I didn't say this earlier. I did read that he was like a prolific bedwetter. Oh. and there were a bunch of other things that he did as a child, which goes back to like everything that we know about serial killers. But, I mean, he was abused as a child in his orphanage, so most kids that are abused are bedwetters. Yeah. And yeah. So, I mean, it kind of goes both ways. Like, you could be a serial killer, you could just have a lot of PTSD. Yeah. Shortly before his abduction of Grace Budd, which we'll get into in a second, um, Fish attempted to test his implements of hell on a child he had been molesting named Cyril Quinn, or Cyril, I don't, I don't know how to say it. But Quinn and his friend were playing box ball on a sidewalk when Fish asked them if they had eaten lunch. When they said that they had not, he invited them into his apartment for sandwiches. Don't go in, children! Well, they did. Stranger danger. They went in. While the two boys were wrestling on Fish's bed, they dislodged his mattress. Underneath was a knife, a small handsaw, and a meat cleaver. Oh, God. They became frightened and ran out of the apartment. Oh, good. So, yeah, they, Nothing they're happened. okay. All right. They were just molested. No big deal. They. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear that part. Sorry. Yeah, so he, Quinn had been being molested by him for a long time. Uh, but later there were a lot of people that said... I know that I keep skipping all around, but um, I just want to talk about his character. A lot of people later said that he was like a grandfather, like he was really sweet and kind and that you would trust him with your children. I hate that. And that's one of the things that I think makes me more sick about it than anything else. 
Because they can fool you. Yeah, like... So many of them are. Like, so many of the serial killers that we hear about are just, like, they come off so nice. Well, They're like, so we talked about earlier with yeah. Ted Bundy. Like, yeah. no one knew he was a serial killer. Like, mm-hmm. he was loved by everyone. And so it's just one of those things where it's, like, it makes you not want to trust anybody in yeah. your life, which mm. I feel like... I am like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know that we're best friends, but... I've but seen too much of the I've, ID channel. I've read too many things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they ran away and they were saved, which I think is really awesome. So then we get to the big one. Hmm. So on May 25th, 1928... Fish saw a classified advertisement in the Sunday edition of the New York World that read, Young man, 18, wishes position in country, Edward Budd, 406 West 15th Street. On May 28th, Fish, then 58 years old, visited the Budd family in Manhattan under the pretense of hiring Edward. He later confessed that he planned to tie Edward up, mutilate him, and leave him to bleed to death. He introduced himself as Frank Howard, a farmer from Farmingdale, New York. Fish promised to hire Bud and his friend Willie and said he would send for them in a few days. So they went to go meet up with him, and he was not there. And they found a handwritten letter from him that said, I'm so sorry, I will be able to get there on a different date. When Fish returned, he, like, showed up at their house, and he he brought a bunch of, like, strawberries and cheese and all of these things, and... Everything that wins people over. Yeah, mm. and he, like, met with them, and he... And cheese. Um, I mean, that <laughs> wins people over right one. now. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Boom. He... He went there and he met the parents and he started talking to them and he was like, yeah, I totally want to like, these are all things from my farm. I want to hire your son and I want to like, I would love to hire him to work for me and all of these things. Like these are all from my farm. And he met like a bunch of the other siblings and they all like sat at the dinner table and talked and they like, the dad became like really good friends with them and like they all like had a great time. And then he talked about how his niece had a birthday party and he wanted to bring Grace and he talked to the parents, Delia and Albert Budd, to let Grace accompany him to the party that evening. And Delia at first was like, no, I don't think so. Like, we don't really know you. We're not going to let our daughter, like, go with you to this party. And Albert was like, no. Like, not Albert Fish. Albert, the father. Mm. Albert Bud. He was like, no, you should totally, like, you can go with him. Like, it's going to be great. You can go have a party. Like, it's going to be, it's going to be so much fun. And he was like, okay, great. I'm going to take her with me. And Grace was, like, so excited to go to this birthday party And they left, and they never saw Grace again. Hmm. So. Did they know that he did it? Yep. There was this investigator that was trying to figure out who stole this little girl. And he kept, like, writing letters to the newspaper, and he was saying all these things, and he was trying to get them to, like, put something in the newspaper so that they could catch someone, and they couldn't figure it out, and they were like, there was this really nice old man, we think, like, he took her, and they don't, they couldn't figure out what was going on, and they, there was this huge investigation, and, but, I mean, this was in the 1930s, Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. they could only do so much. Finally, the investigator had gotten the newspaper like he kept sending them things and finally the newspaper was like fine we'll put we'll put something out there and the newspaper printed that they had found who like had taken grace and they were about to catch him and that they would know everything within a month so four days after that there was a letter that showed up and 
here's the trigger. Oh, God. So I'm just going to warn everyone because I'm going to read the letter from him. And it's okay. real bad. So in November 1934, an anonymous letter was sent to the girl's parents, which ultimately led to the police to fish. Mrs. Bud was illiterate and could not read the letter herself, so she had her son read it to her. The unaltered letter, complete with Fish's misspellings and grammatical errors, reads, My dear Mrs. Bud, in 1894, a friend of mine shipped as a deckhand on the steamer Tacoma, Captain John Davis. They sailed from San Francisco to Hong Kong, China. On arriving there... He and two others went ashore and got drunk. When they returned, the boat was gone. At that time, there was a famine in China. Meat of any kind was from $1 to $3 a pound. So great was the suffering among the very poor that all children under 12 were sold to the butchers to be cut up and sold for food in order to keep others from starving. A boy or girl under 14 was not safe in the street. You could go in any shop and ask for steak, chops, or stew meat. Part of the naked body of a boy or girl would be brought out and just what you wanted cut from it. A boy... Okay, I can't with your guys' faces. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm very disturbed right now. <clears throat> a boy or girl's body, which is the sweetest part of the body and sold as veal cutlet, brought the highest price. John stayed there. There so long, he acquired a taste for human flesh. On his return to New York, he stole two boys, one seven, one eleven, took them to his home, stripped them naked, tied them in a closet, then burned everything they had on. Several times every day and night, he spanked them, tortured them to make their meat good and tender. First, he killed the 11-year-old boy because he had the fattest ass and, of course, the most meat on it. Every part of his body was cooked and eaten except head, bones, and guts. He was roasted in the oven, all of his ass, boiled, broiled, fried, stewed. The little boy was next, went the same way. At that time, I was living at 409 East 100th Street, rear right side. He told me so often how good human flesh was, I made up my mind to taste it. On Sunday, June the 3rd, 1928, I called on you at 406 West 15th Street, brought you pot cheese strawberries. We had lunch. Grace sat in my lap and kissed me. I made up my mind to eat her on the pretense of taking her to a party. You said, yes, she could go. I took her to an empty house in Westchester I had already picked out. When we got there, I told her to remain outside. She picked wildflowers. I went upstairs and stripped all my clothes off. I knew if I did not, I would get her blood on them. When all was ready, I went to the window and called her. Then I hid in a closet until she was in the room. When she saw me all naked, she began to cry and tried to run downstairs. I grabbed her, and she said she would tell her mama. First, I stripped her naked, how she did kick, bite, and scratch. I choked her to death, then put then cut her in small pieces so I could take my meat to my rooms, cook and eat it. How sweet and tender her little ass was roasted in the oven. It took me nine days to eat her entire body. I did not fuck her, though. I could have had I wished she died a virgin. The end? So that's the end of the letter that Jesus he wrote. Jesus Christ in heaven. I just need a minute. <laughs> So I had a lot of pre-wine. Well, that's super messed up. Yeah. I really mean, like, I can't up. actually wrap my head around that. I mean, I can't. Some, like, Hansel and Gretel shit. Yeah. But, but like, worse. worse. Yeah. Somehow. He sent that letter to her, to her to that little girl's mom. Yeah. Like, it's it's making me lightheaded. Yeah. I feel like this wine should be stronger to talk about this. I'm sorry to this all of you This bottle was absolutely perfect for this episode. Thank you. The devil bottle of The wine. devil bottle, because yeah. that man red. is the devil. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. yeah. Are we ready to continue? Yeah. Okay. I think for some reason, I'm, I'm like, okay, just because this happened so long ago that I'm trying to compartmentalize, maybe? Yeah. Like, it's... 
it's it it's, almost seems like folklore like it's like uh well that's fit. why he has so many names like he was cons- like they call him the boogeyman yeah uh because i think that this is the reason why he is such a big part of american history with like as a serial killer and the fact that like i feel like most of our horror movies are mm-hmm. written about him it takes like a certain kind of person to want it, I mean, obviously, it takes a certain kind of person to do the things that he did, but then also to write in so her parents knew what he did in such in, detail. In su- yeah, yeah. I was listening to a podcast about it earlier, and they don't know how accurate everything was because, I mean, he's a serial killer, so, like, how true do we know the, the things that he said? Most people, like, he thought that he was doing God's work by killing children and <laughs> eating them, basically. But uh, I think they don't know if she was actually, like, raped or if, like, because he said that she wasn't, but they think that she probably was. But that's not something that he would want to admit because yeah. that's something that he doesn't feel, like, he can't justify that. Mm. And a lot of serial killers lie about the things that they can't justify in their mind they're like oh that didn't happen yeah. even though it could yeah. have happened mm-hmm. so police investigated the letter and they couldn't verify a lot of it and the one thing that they could figure out was that the letter was delivered in an envelope that had a small hexagonal emblem with the letters NYPCBA which represented New York Private Chauffeurs Benevolent Association. So they went to this association, they they took the handwritten letter and like cross-referenced it to everybody else's like mm-hmm. I was about to say, oh, why would he even handwrite that? Why would not just like you type, know, it? type that shit up on a computer? <laughs> 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 Uh, God, he's so stupid. <laughs> what a dummy. <laughs> How did he get caught? Um, they so did have typewriters, he, though. <laughs> they yeah, did have true. typewriters, yes. He probably wasn't rich enough to have a typewriter. Mm. That's probably the one thing. So they asked everyone there if they had taken any stationery or anything. So they asked the people that were cross-referenced that didn't have like handwriting matching so they didn't ask like everybody yeah and the janitor at the company told the police he had taken some of the stationery home but left it at his rooming house when he moved out the landlady the landlady of the rooming house said that fish checked out of the room a few days earlier and like everything that they described about him matched up Mm -hmm. with fish he was waiting on a letter from his son. William F. King was a chief in- investigator, and he was waiting, and Fish walked in, and he was like, are you Albert Fish? And Fish took out a razor blade and tried to attack him, and they were able to, like, arrest him on the about the murder of Grace Budd. Fish made no attempt to deny the murder of Grace Budd, saying that he meant to go to the house to kill Edward Budd, and that it never entered his head to rape the girl, but later he claimed to his attorney that while kneeling on Grace's chest and strangling her, he did have two involuntary ejaculations. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Sorry. So this information was used at the trial to make the claim the kidnapping was sexually motivated, thus avoiding any mention of cannibalism. So they wanted to stay away from that because... The idea of cannibalism at the time, which I'm sure is probably still relevant, is much like once you bring that into it, yeah. you can easily like claim insanity. Yeah. Right. And so they wanted to stay away from that as much as possible because they didn't want him to be able to like claim insanity. Right. They wanted him to die. Yes. Tell us he died. So after he was arrested, they found out a bunch of other things about him. So they arrested him, and then they found out that there were other things that came out. So Francis McDonald was a nine-year-old who was reported missing back in 1924. So, like, back a long, long time ago. They couldn't find his body, and 
they like tried to they tried to find him eventually a search was organized and his body was found hanging by a tree in a wooded area near his home he had been sexually assaulted then strangled with his with his suspenders according to an autopsy mcdonald had also suffered extensive lacerations to his legs and abdomen and his left hamstring had almost entirely been stripped of its flesh Fish refused to claim responsibility for this, although he later stated that he intended to castrate the boy, but fled when he heard someone approaching the area. But they were able to find a man who, like, identified. They, like, had seen the little boy with an older man with a gray mustache and they called him the gray man Mm. and he was like in a totally different area and they had they saw his thick gray hair and his drooping gray mustache everything about him seemed faded and gray and they called him the gray man so eventually the eyewitnesses came forth and then as soon as fish was arrested for this other murder they were able to connect it with this one and they were like yes that is the guy that i saw with the child. I can't believe I've never heard of this one Yeah, before. me neither. I mean, the boogeyman really did exist. Yeah. yeah he so. was definitely one of them. Um, at first, Fish denied the charges. It was only in March 1935, after the conclusion of his trial for the Bud murder and his confession to the killing of Billy Gaffney, which we're about to get into, that Fish confirmed to investigators that he also raped and murdered Francis McDonald. When the McDonald confession was made public, the New York Daily Mirror wrote the dis- wrote that the disclosure solidified Fish's reputation as the most vicious child slayer in criminal history. He was only convicted of three murders, but he also admitted to stabbing two other people. And there was like a bunch of other things that he, I mean, he raped over like 200 people mm-hmm. or 200 children. Ugh. We don't know if he killed more than that, but he only admitted to the three. On February 11th, 1927, three-year-old Billy Beaton and his 12-year-old brother were playing in the apartment hallway in Brooklyn with four-year-old Billy Gaffney. When the 12-year-old left for his apartment, both younger boys disappeared. Beaton was found later on the roof of the apartments. When asked what happened to Gaffney, Beaton said the boogeyman took him. Gaffney's body was never recovered. They didn't find the four-year-old. The three-year-old said that he that the other boy was taken by the boogeyman, which at the time, so all of these things, so both of these other murders, so this little boy and then Francis, happened in the twenties, and people like they they didn't really like look like they didn't tie them together very well, and I mean back then they didn't have Amber Alerts, they didn't have all mm-hmm. these things, so. They had the gray man, and then they had the boogeyman. And and after Albert Fish was arrested, they finally went back and they asked the little boy. Beaton's description of the boogeyman matched Fish. Detectives of the Manhattan Missing Persons Bureau were able to establish that Fish was employed by a house painter by a Brooklyn real estate company during February 1927, and that on the day of Billy Gaffney's disappearance, he was working at a location a few miles away from where the bo- boy was d- abducted. One thing that I think is really cool is that they're able to figure all this out back in like... Yeah, that is like, kind of crazy. Actually. We didn't have the internet. Mm-hmm. We didn't have like all of this information. And so the fact that they're able to connect all these things was really fascinating they're to real me. real smart back then. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we got all dumbed down we by the internet. Dumbed up. <laughs> so, uh, Fish claimed the following in a letter to his attorney. So, here's another letter from Fish. I brought him to the Riker Avenue dumps. There's a house that stands alone, not far, not far from where I took him. I took the G boy there, stripped him naked, and tied his hands and feet, and gagged him with a piece of dirty ragged dirty rag I picked out of the dump. Then I burned his clothes, threw his shoes in the dump. Then I walked back and took trolley to 59th Street at 2 a.m. and walked home from there. Next day, about 2 p.m., I took tools, a good heavy cat of nine tails, homemade, short handle. It's a whip. Cut one of my belts in half, 
slit these half in six strips about eight inches long. I whipped his bear behind till the blood ran from his legs. I cut off his ears, nose, slit his mouth from ear to ear, gouged out his eyes. He was dead then. I stuck the knife in his belly and held my mouth to his body and drank his blood, which is why he was called the vampire. The vampire. Mm. I picked up four old potato sacks and gathered a pile of stones. Then I cut him up. I had a grip with me. I put his nose, ears, and a few slices of his belly in the grip. Then I cut him through the middle of his body, just below his belly button. Then through his legs about two inches below his behind. I put this in my grip with a lot of paper. I cut off the head, feet, arms, hands, and the legs below the knee. This I put in sacks weighed with stones, tied the ends, and threw them into the pools of slimy water you will see all along the road going to North Beach. Water is three to four feet deep. They sank at once. I came home with my meat. I had the front of his body I liked best. I had the front of his body I liked best. His monkey and peewees. I put strips of bacon on each cheek of his behind and put it in the oven. Then I picked four onions and when meat had roasted about a quarter of an hour, I poured about a pint of water over it for gravy and put in the onions. At frequent at frequent interview, intervals, I can't even talk. It's so messed up. At frequent intervals, I basted his behind with a wooden spoon so the meat would be nice and juicy in about two hours it was nice and brown cooked through i never ate any roast turkey that tasted half as good as his sweet fat little behind did i ate every bit of the meat in about four days i can't finish it uh so elizabeth gaffney the mother uh she wanted to talk and ask him about her son's death, but Fish refused to speak to her. Fish began to weep and asked to be left alone. After two hours of asking him questions through his lawyer, James Dempsey, Mrs. Gaffney gave up. She was still unconvinced that Albert Fish was her son's killer. Wait, she was unconvinced after he wrote that letter? That extremely disturbing, like, detailed I... letter? think that maybe she didn't in denial yeah i mean i can't even read the letter completely without like and i can't even imagine like if that was my child yeah. like i would i would want to not believe that that was true. i gotta tell you i have i have like a pretty strong stomach when it comes to hearing crime stories but this is like this is very 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 dark yeah it's like the dark it's like this one of the like darkest, darkest stories yeah. that you could talk about you're right though the the fact that there's a line from like talking about serial killers even just like even john wayne gacy the fact that he raped and murdered these boys, boys yeah. but, like this dude ate children the thing is i feel like if it wasn't children if it was adults it, it wouldn't would be, be as different. bad it wouldn't be as bad you're correct it's I, weird well, like and i think just children because they well i think that... are defenseless and yeah. helpless and our like whole maternal and paternal instincts are to raise that child to adulthood safely so when like we fail at that so badly <sighs> it's strange because i feel like i i get triggered more by animal abuse like if this was happening to animals i don't know why for some reason i i kind of have like this she's not a vegetarian by the way I'm so i'm confused by this yeah but i don't know i mean i, I guess can't... it is technically happening to animals detail like we you... do that to yeah animals exactly. on a daily yeah i i'm thinking house pets i guess you care more about house pets than you do children? no no i'm i'm i told you earlier i'm compartmentalizing oh, i feel like yeah. i don't really actually i'm hearing what you're saying but it's but it's not, not like, affecting me the way it's affecting both of you because i'm not thinking about it like this is happening right now this is yeah, so, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking of more like witch trials like salem shit like and, it's just like a, you know it's like folklore like it's, like it's, like like it's not it's actually fake. a real story yeah definitely. See, and i i think that i have like such a vivid imagination and i have like what are you trying to say <laughs> that I can't watch scary movies either <laughs> without getting freaked like, out. I feel like I have a vivid imagination too, but also I'm it's a defense mechanism to oh. compartmentalize things that scare me into a part that's like, oh, it's not real. Don't even think about it like that. Think about it like a story you're reading like 
you know, like Hansel like, and Gretel. Like they're cooking film. these children yeah. in an oven and eating them, you know, like. It's that's, not real. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I think that it would be easy for me to pretend like this is wasn't real if I wasn't researching it. Yeah. Yeah. Like. I'm probably going to have to watch a few episodes of, like, Bob's Burgers, Bob's Burgers or Friends sure, or something. Yeah. yeah. Something <laughs> Before you go to bed to Yeah. Something to make me laugh to yeah. not think about bad things. So he gets convicted? What, so what he's happens? in prison. Okay. And uh, the trial lasted for 10 days. Fish pleaded insanity and claimed to have heard voices from God telling him to kill children. Several psychiatrists testified about Fish's sexual fetishes, which included... Sadism, masochism, cunnilingus, analingus, fellatio, fl- flagellation, flagellation, exhibitionism, voyeurism, picurism, cannibalism, cofrophagia, I think that's the one I said earlier, urophilia, pe- pedophilia, and infibulation. So, basically, they tried to say that he was crazy and insane and all the things. And the none of the jurors doubted that Fish was insane. But ultimately, as one later explained, they felt he should be executed anyway. Good. They found him to be sane and guilty, and the judge ordered the death sentence. Fish arrived at prison in March 1935 and was executed on January 16th, 1936 in the Mm -hmm. electric chair. He entered the chamber at 11.06 p.m. and was pronounced dead three minutes later. He was also one of the... I hope he felt all three minutes. I hope so. He was like the oldest man in the history of... At that point? No, still to this day. He's the oldest to be... um, Put to death. Huh. How old was he at the time? Mm. He must have been in his 70s, 80s? Yeah, he was like in his... He was... He was old. old. He was old. Wow. Um, At a meeting with reporters after the execution, Fish's lawyer, James Dempsey, revealed that he was in possession of his client's final statement. This amounted to several pages of handwritten notes that Fish apparently penned in the hours just prior to his death. When pressed by the assembled journalists to reveal the document's contents, Dempsey refused, stating, I will never show it to anyone. It was the most most filthy string of obscenities that I have ever read. So, there's your real fucked up story. And those of you that don't know me, I usually don't say that word, but... It's really bad, and um, thanks, Brittany. <laughs> thanks, Brittany. Yeah. Doing that real down. Appreciate it. No, it's it's an interesting story. It's it's one of those that I think should be talked about more often. Just by other people. <laughs> yeah, like I do think that like the fact that there was this horrible person that committed these heinous crimes that most people don't even know about. Like it's. It's actually kind of crazy to me. I love true crime and I love like stories, not necessarily like this. I I like to stay away from the whole children thing, but um, that I haven't even heard of it. Me neither. It's blowing my mind. Yeah. Not even folklore about it. Is there like a movie on this? Yeah, there is. It's called The Gray Man. Uh, But I, I mean, I have heard of him. I've but because you I've read about psychology. him, yeah, and I've I talked to a few of my clients this week about how I was researching him for our podcast, and none they were like, no one's heard of him. That like sounds like I might have heard of him, but I don't really know. Like, so <laughs> I'm I'm glad that we're real good at choosing people and stories that people haven't heard about. Yeah. And even when I was researching him, it was hard to find a lot of information i like to listen to podcasts as well and there were very few podcasts that i could find that actually talked about it because i think it's one of those things that people are afraid to trigger yeah it's a trigger story it's horrible it's horrific and it's not something that like it's not one of those things that like we want to talk about but i mean he is like the real life boogeyman he was and if that doesn't give you nightmares i'm not sure what yeah it would that's the bottom it's the bottom. Whew. That was so, heavy. Everybody needs to take welcome. a big breath. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we do want to take this time after 
after this long episode of murder, yeah. serial killer, children, rapist stuff, uh, we want to say thank you to all of our people who have been supporting us and leaving us good feedback and sending us emails, letting us know what they like and what they dislike and what they want from us. And uh, we appreciate every word that we're we getting. We like it all. Yeah, it makes us feel real good inside and in that we're actually like doing people like a good service yeah. i guess like we're doing this for fun for us i was but gonna say like we enjoy this yeah, very much we're doing it just we enjoy doing this like we enjoy hanging out together we enjoy like doing this and drinking and, wine yeah. and drinking wine Duh. but Duh. we are happy that you guys also enjoy that so um thank you for letting us know that you actually do enjoy it Absolutely. And if you haven't let us know that you enjoy it, we would love you to send us an email at popcrimewine at gmail.com or give us that five star review, you know, like give us we them love five seeing stars. Um, and also we have some really exciting news to share with you. We will probably be unveiling in the next couple episodes. So please stay tuned. Yeah. We're Ooh. super excited. Um, yeah. Our Instagram is at popcrime and wine. Same with Twitter. So if you want to hit Facebook. us up, Facebook is the same. Mm -hmm. Let us know if you want to sponsor. Um, I know we have a list of sponsors, but we can always use more because we love the wine. The vino. <laughs> the vino. Oh. All, right. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you. And have as a good always. Night or day or whatever time it is that you're listening to this. Oh, yes. We appreciate you. International. All of the things. I forgot <laughs> to talk like Taylor the whole time. I'm oh. so sorry. Oh, yeah. We forgot. I so, this I has been be so wonderful. Sexy TT voices. So, we will uh, see, see you next, next Tuesday, Tuesday. <laughs> Mr. President. I'm just kidding. can't talk like <laughs> no. that. Like, that's already you already have it. I gotta be extra, extra sexy. <laughs>